Tony's Topics. Tony's Topics, Tony's Topics. What's happening, folks? My name's Tony. Welcome to Tony's Topics. Alrighty then. I guess this is going to be my NFL review for week 13, which is coming up. So, yeah, I believe that's right. At this point, the Cardinals are 9-2, and two, making them 11, one rest week 12. So this is week 13 on the way. Alrighty then. So, welcome to my week 13. And now, I'm giving this out before on um, Wednesday night before Thursday drops. So, here are my picks for who's going to take it home and why, if I can say this all in a nutshell. Alrighty then. First up, uh, Chicago versus Detroit. Detroit. I mean, Detroit at one point was considered to have the best defense in the league this year. I mean, by the numbers. Granted, it all depends on who you play, but I usually take Detroit in that matchup. Next up, Philadelphia versus Dallas. This one's actually a pretty close one to call because I think their records are about the same. I think they're, what, both 8-3? and three? But I give it to Dallas. Uh, something special about the Cowboys this year, as well as Philadelphia seems to buckle when they have to go up against a really hard team. You know, that offense is great, but uh, when it comes to the defense, it, Philly just seems to buckle to me. Seahawks versus San Francisco 49ers. I hate this, because I was happy with either one of those teams winning the Super Bowl this year, but honestly... I go with the Seahawks over the 49ers for several reasons, and honestly, I could do an entire episode off of the Seahawks and 49ers. Matter of fact, I think I might just anyway. But okay, in a recap, number one, Colin Kaepernick has lost himself. Okay, he is a running quarterback, but he's trying to play like Peyton Manning, long bombing the ball and all this stuff, and just really setting himself up for a lot of interceptions. So the San Francisco 49ers have lost their offensive way. On the other hand, the Seahawks have lost their offensive way a little bit with the Tate, uh, the Golden Tate trade. Honestly, I don't think they ever needed Harvin when I really look back at it. I mean, I don't even remember Harvin playing last year until the Super Bowl. And I think somebody said that's because he didn't play until the Super Bowl, which means you had a 13-3 and record without Harvin. So why did you ever trade for him in the first place? But losing Golden Tate really hurts the uh, Seahawks offense. Because basically, there's, it seems to be a top team. You need to have three real offensive weapons. Practic you know, it's almost like basketball. You've got to have three stars. Well, to be a top NFL team, you have to have three offensive, unstoppable weapons. And for the Seahawks, those three, rep those three weapons last year were Russell Wilson, uh, Marshawn Lynch, and I would say Golden Tate as the offensive throwing line, uh, as the offensive uh, receiver. Because basically, if you have Golden Tate out there, that's gonna, he's going to demand more focus, which frees up Baldwin, Kears, Heflin, or the other Wilson, or whoever else you have out there to be able to catch the ball a lot easier. Not to mention, with Marshawn Lynch and Russell Wilson as your running game, and yes, Russell Wilson is the running game. Anybody who sees him play knows he is a full-blown running quarterback. You know, Sneaky and slick as a grease snake. I mean, you know, it's hard to tackle Russell Wilson. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he is extremely hard to tackle. And I wish Kaepernick would get back to that. Because Kaepernick isn't uh, sleek and evasive like Russell Wilson. He's just strong. He, you know, he has that get off me, you know. And so I wish if you would just go back to running the ball. You know, toss it to Gore. Hit Crabtree if he's open. But otherwise, run the ball yourself, man. Because you have that capability to do that. But he's not doing that. And the 49ers defense is probably the only thing still making them a winning team right now. Until Cap gets back to playing like old Cap used to play. With just, I'll take it up myself. Stop trying to be Peyton Manning. Stop playing like him. Okay. So the rest of my picks. I'm sorry. I just had to go off on that tangent for a minute. Back to business. All right. So let me see here. San Diego over Bal uh, the Chargers versus Baltimore. I think one of my friends asked me about this. Baltimore does have a decent record. Uh, the Chargers were good at one point. And I, said, I told them the San Diego Chargers. Uh, I guess I'll go with the Chargers. And let's see here. Cleveland versus Buffalo. Cleveland. You know, uh, whatever, whatever, not really worth talking about. Tennessee versus Houston. Houston. I mean, they're both sorry, but Houston over Tennessee. Washington versus the Colts. The Colts. Um, let's see here. The Giants versus the Jaguars. Wow, the Giants. Uh, let's see here. Carolina versus Minnesota. And at one point, I told my friend, Carolina used to be a great team versus Minnesota. I still stick with Carolina. Whatever. You know, I mean, chances are, stats say you probably should take Minnesota in that matchup, but I take Carolina. Because, I mean, how do you just go from being an elite team to utter garbage in one year? Come on, show some sign. All right, 
Uh, let's see here. Pittsburgh over the Saints. Pittsburgh over the Saints. Uh, anybody over Oakland. So, yeah, I'm taking St. Louis Rams over Oakland. But And let's see here. Who else? Cincinnati over Tampa Bay. I'm taking that. Arizona over Atlanta. I don't know what happened in the Seahawks game. Like, you know, I mean, yeah, Kilpatrick was out. But, golly, you know, what happened? Uh, New England over Green Bay. New England over Green Bay. But it really doesn't take much to see that. But New England over Green Bay. Uh, Denver over Kansas City. And let's see here. Miami versus the Jets. Miami versus the Jets. Miami, because that team actually seems to play like they really want it. And those are my picks. Thanks for watching.